Space Marines might be portrayed as godlike beings, but genetic flaws are found in almost every single Space Marine gene seed regardless of their prime arc. While some are subtle, others are so apparent that they dramatically change a Battle Brothers life forever. The Blood Angels chapter is infamous for their genetic flaws, which have the potential to end a Space Marine's life if allowed to take hold. One of the biggest questions we get is what happens when the genetic flaw strikes a Battle Brother inside of a Dreadnought. This is a good question because a Space Marine inside of a Dreadnought is basically already on his deathbed. The chassis of the Dreadnought is a sarcophagus, so what does a genetic mutation do to an already dead Space Marine? The answer is that a space marine is kept alive by the life support systems of the dreadnought and the genetic flaw is allowed to run rampant on whatever is left inside of the sarcophagus. These types of situations are extremely rare and only a few of the dreadnoughts that succumb to a genetic flaw are allowed to live. The best example of these types of cursed battle brothers is the death company dreadnought. And with that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another 40 facts about the 40k universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about the Dreadnoughts of the Death Company. If you guys are new to the channel, we post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. And if you guys like these types of lore videos, hit the thumbs up, let me know in the comment section below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But with all that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Death Company Dreadnoughts. Death Company Dreadnoughts differ from standard Imperial Dreadnoughts in that their occupants are Astartes that are suffering from the Blood Angel's genetic flaw known as the Black Rage. The Black Rage is a genetic flaw that creates mental instability in the Blood Angels, or one of their successor chapters. A Battle Brother is overcome with the memories and consciousness of Sanguinius. This intrusion mentally teleports the Astarte to the Siege of Terra that had occurred 10,000 Terran years ago. He is lost and unable to distinguish past from reality to the point where his fellow battle brothers might be perceived as the enemy. Some blood angels afflicted with the black rage may believe they are sanguineous fighting in the bloody battles of the Horus Heresy, or they are the legionnaires desperately trying to save their primarch from death. The black rage can strike a son of sanguineous prior to or during a battle. When this happens, the uncontrollable rage of sanguineous himself charges the battle brothers with constant anger, hatred, and fury. They possess a small portion of the Primarch's unearthly powers, as their strength and vitality boost to levels that seem superhuman even to those of the Space Marines. The condition is largely irreversible, and only a few Blood Angels have managed to overcome the flaw. Rather than let them face a slow, insane death, the Blood Angels and their successors will form a special unit from those that have newly succumbed to the Black Rage. This special force is known as the Death Company. The Dreadnoughts of the Blood Angels and their successors are not immune to the Black Rage, and a Dreadnought pilot that is consumed by the Black Rage can also join the ranks of their chapter's death company. A Dreadnought under the influence of the Black Rage is nearly impossible to control or restrain, and as such, he may rage out of control for solar days until the chapter's tech marines can rig a device to disable him. It is then up to the chapter's sanguinary priest to judge whether or not the Dreadnought's occupant should be sedated until the next battle, or relieved of his life so that another can take its place. If the occupant of the Dreadnought chassis is still sane enough to follow directions after he wakes up, he will be moved to the chapter's death company, where his Dreadnought body will be able to withstand tremendous amounts of punishment, and hopefully his unending rage will result in the death of many of the Emperor's foes. Death Company Dreadnoughts are usually armed for close-range combat, where their unstoppable rage and heavily armored sarcophagus render them nearly invulnerable to enemy attack. These Dreadnoughts are deployed by their chapter for assault purposes when enemy positions are deemed too dangerous for any Astarte except those who are under the influence of the Black Rage. As such, Death Company Dreadnoughts are almost always armed with two Dreadnought close combat weapons. These types of Dreadnoughts are rarely ever armed with conventional long range weaponry. It would be pointless, as these Dreadnoughts would only use it until it is close enough to engage the enemy in melee. The chapter has learned to overcome this barrier by arming the Dreadnought with two Blood Fist. This is a variant of the Dreadnought Power Fist that is used exclusively by the Blood Angels and their successor chapters. These weapons are outfitted with an underslung Storm Bolter on one arm and an underslung Melta Gun on the other. The Dreadnought Storm Bolter can also be switched out for a Heavy Flamer for greater close combat firepower. Both of the Walker's Blood Fists can be replaced with a pair of Blood Talons. Just like the Blood Fist, the Blood Talons are used exclusively by the Blood Angels and their successors. They're just a variant of the Dreadnought Lightning Claw. The Blood Angels also have another weapon that is exclusive to the Death Company Dreadnoughts, the mighty Magna Grapple. The Magna Grapple is capable of firing several yards of tempered adamantium chain attached to a powerful magnetic and gravitic field generator. When fired at the enemy vehicle, the Magna Grapple's chains form an unyielding bond with the enemy vehicle's hull, allowing the Dreadnought to pull the vehicle in close to finish it off with its main close combat weapons. 
One of the Death Company's most famous dreadnoughts was Moriar the Chosen. Moriar was once the captain of the Blood Angels' fourth company, until he fell on the field of battle of Clamorga, defending a ridge against the Eldar. His mortal wounds proved too numerous and severe for even the skills of a sanguinary priest to heal up. As such, Moriar was placed within the adamantium sarcophagus of a mighty Furioso dreadnought. It was built by Brother Merleo, which had contained the Blood Angels' heroes Balafon, Dario, and Amaretto before him. Upon awakening in this new, indestructible cybernetic body, Moriar was overcome by visions of Sanguinius' death during the Horus Heresy. Moriar's own near-death stage triggered the curse of the Black Rage, an unusual occurrence in a Blood Angel dreadnought. Immortal now in the adamantium shell, Moriar managed to survive the ravages of the Black Rage. He was then given the honor of continuing to serve his chapter by being placed within the chapter's infamous Death Company. As the sole dreadnought to serve within this company of dead men walking, Moriar now fights completely without fear, as befits warriors certain of their own demise and the furious willpower lent to them by the Black Rage. With his dreadnought body, he has been rendered impervious to wounds that would kill a regular battle brother. Some of the Blood Angel's greatest victories have followed in the wake of the furious assault led by Moriar the Chosen and his death company. Yet despite the glories of Moriar's valorous deeds, a price must be paid, for in the fleeting calm of victory, the mighty Dreadnought has sometimes also succumbed to the effects of the Red Thirst. To restrain him when not in battle, his revered battle brothers have modified his armor shell so that he may partake of the blood required to slake the awful curse. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. <laughs>